the water. Can you hear my yeah. recording? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll let it. Um, and no, I, I can't hear you. We hear you. Oh, okay. So water comes down the pipe here. There's two filters on this pipe. The top one, and a, there's another filter down here. There's a cap. I open this cap um, and let the first two rains go off just to clean out the gutter. Um, and then put the cap back on about a third good rain to start collecting. The water goes into these two tanks. They're called slim tank. Well, I had one before and I added another one later, so that's why they don't look exactly the same. These are the top uh, cap for overflow, so if the tanks are full, and it can be full, so these two are over a thousand gallons. 630 or so each tank. So with one good rain overnight, it can be full, which is amazing. It has, these two are connected. It goes to this white pipe and it's connected to the pump over here by the side. It's covered. Um, but then when it's open, this, this is an electric pump. One and a half horsepower uh, grounded onto the floor, connected to the garden hose. There's an outlet here when I need to plug in. And the hose goes through the storage tank. I have lots of these barrels. Um, they are dark water, those are the best. And I keep the tight lid to keep the mosquitoes out. I don't add anything into the rainwater. Up the hill is the greenhouse with the swamp cooler. It runs by thermostat inside about 78 degrees. The rainwater, this is run by 100% rainwater until I run out and there's a tap water pull into the greenhouse when, um, when I don't have enough. Um, like this year, I probably will run out by September. The excess water is in, in this green hose goes into the uh, barrel again, collected and recycled for the plants. Um, these are storage tanks. There's five of them lining up here by the fence. Each one is 1,100 gallons. This top valve can be open and I drop the hose in there when I need to uh, fill the tank with the, the pump waters. There's a pressure tank on the behind here in blue color. It's 120 gallon because the greenhouse is a little bit uh, higher in ground. The water doesn't flow in automatically. So the pressure tank will uh, pump into the greenhouse when it's low. I also have the um, gutter that collects a little bit of water into this tank. Behind here is the Shea House where the Cymbidium and the Aussie Dendrobiums are, uh, live year round. And uh, I have the back door with um, louvers for the exhaust fans when it's hot. And that's set to about 90, 95 degrees. I also have a tough uh, roof van, solar van um, up here so that it pulls the hot air out. I have a luminate um, cover and that keeps the greenhouse cool a little bit and bright. So um, that's a short video. Can I answer any questions for you? Great. Thank I you. have a quick question. Where do you live? I yeah, live in San Jose. Ah, oh, a lot of sun. Okay. I have about 12 hours sun in the summer. Okay. Uh, the greenhouse, the length of the greenhouse is facing south. So I, I get lots of sun uh, most, most days. I mean, we don't really get cloudy day, maybe early in the morning, but um, pretty bright up in, in the, um, by 9, 9 a.m. The sun goes out and the heat goes up. So I usually keep the, both the front and the back door open. And, the, and I also have two manual roof vents um, I just open them when the temperature reach about 65 because the heat buildup is pretty fast. 
can go over 100 degree when um, it's only 75 outside. So it gets hot and, um, but I, I grow many bright things um, that I need the light. So even the lower bench, I can grow cutlea on the lower benches. Um, mm. This is a quite an expensive investment, but you know, it's just, it, it helps because right after I did this, the city raised up the water. Um, I still pay a little bit, but um, the plants are using 100% rainwater. I collect about, if, I, if all the barrels and tanks are full, I can collect up to about 11,000 gallons. Wow. And um, it, it, if, if it's full, then I have enough till November when it rains again. This year I collected only about, maybe about eight, seven or 8,000 gallons. So definitely will run out by September, August, September for sure. So by July, I probably will start mixing uh, half tap water with green water just so that um, I space out until November. Yeah, I pay somebody to do all that setup. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. You have great. To treat, do you have to treat your local water in any way? No. You mean the rainwater? I don't treat with anything, just keep the. No, really no you're gr when you. When you mix it with your local water, tap water that comes from the city, do you have to treat the, that water in any way? No, I don't. Um, I just tend to fill up the barrels outside the night before I use so that the chlorine is kind of, you know, evaporate a little bit by the next morning. Um, and I don't, I don't add anything to the water, either water, either rain. Is it, water. is it chlorine or is it chloramine? Is San Jose on a chloramine? Because that's uh, down the national standard. Probably both. Yeah, I don't know. I don't test the water, but um, we don't have the worst water, but not the best either. It's, it's worse than San Francisco for sure. Yeah, many people grow plants in San Jose with tap water with no problem. Um, so I just want to save money and since I have a huge backyard, I can make many tanks and many barrels um, and uh, started collecting. You know, as, as this is Eric, as I think about it, when I lived in San Jose, the water quality, the water was, had a lot of dissolved stuff in it. So your rainwater system definitely can help to lower the amount of uh, PPMs of stuff in that you put on your orchids. So it'll grow better quality orchids probably. Absolutely, that's for sure. I can tell the difference when I start, you know, using, even mixing, um, yeah, it's not the same. So you don't need to get an RO unit. That's, that's your RO unit. <laughs> that's my RO unit. I do need to add more calcium to it though because it's pure water. Um, and yeah, some of the plants don't bloom until I add calcium. So even though I use the fertilizer with some calcium, it's not enough. So that's the one thing that if you use rainwater, you have to add um, some nutrients back, um, such as calcium. And I use the liquid calcium, so that's easy mix. Excellent. All right, back to you, Jeff. All right, any other questions? No, that's... All right, we're learning a lot tonight. Thank you both. It is, wonderful. <laughs> Experts. I have a question, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, what are the names of the uh, of the uh, uh, two big barrels you've got closest to your house? It's and called a slim slim tank because they are designed to be slim. They don't take much space. Where do you, um, get, them? Where do you get them? I got them from a company called Rain uh, Saver in Campbell, California. So it's in the South Bay, but um, I'm sure you can. You can order it. Somebody in Santa Cruz told me there's another company. I was looking for it, but um, so they, since this guy does all the installation, I went with him, even though he's a little bit more expensive. Now, if you know how to install them, I don't think they're pretty hard at all if you know how to connect those pipes. Um, and you can buy the tank they deliver by truck. Um, 
and you can do it themselves yourself is probably much cheaper. Yeah, I pay both the tang and the labor. And each tang, um, when I put the first tang, it, the slim tang, the brown one, it costed, uh, if I remember correctly, it was uh, less, about maybe 600, I don't know, five or $600. And then when I added it, the second tang, about two years later, it cost me a lot more, close to a thousand. And each of the round green, dark green, uh, 1100 um, tang on the back costed about a thousand each. So yeah, it costs, it, it's quite an investment, um, but I hope it'll last many years. Where did you get the uh, 1100 uh, gallon tanks? From the same company, Rain Saver. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're are welcome. There, are there rebates from the utilities for doing this or? Any sort? Um, my understanding, because I kept asking my tax consultant when I did it, no, um, there is now. So this, I know the Santa Clara County uh, offers, but you have to apply before you do it. Um, you get a permit or some sort, and then you need to save all your receipts and then get reimbursed and, or somehow claim on taxes. I understand that they allow that now, but not a few years ago when I put it together. Um, so I can't go back and claim the cost, but that's a good good question that I believe it is now uh, tax rebatable. Good. All right, well, we're doing good. We're halfway through. Oh, I see Bill Weaver's joined us. Hey, Bill. Um, <clears throat> So we're moving on to show and tell. The people that sent me photos, I'm gonna start with them. And then if anyone else wants to jump in at the end, we'll go ahead and do that before we wrap up and do the raffle. Um, also- I have a question. Did you get my, vi my video today? I think I put it in the mail. I'm not sure. Or met, yeah. Uh, uh, you may have to share it. I don't think I, no, I didn't get a, that's all right. I don't even, I don't want to learn how to learn right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're all figuring it out. It's working. Yeah. So my phone. Me... It's in my phone. So I don't know how to get it. And I'm on my laptop. All so right. I don't want to go back and forth, but I'm good. Can everyone see a symbidium? Yes. 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 Okay. So people sent me their pictures and I put them in a folder and we're going to just go through and I'm going to ask you to talk about your stuff as we go. So first one up is and, uh, Andrea Laudette. I um, have a whole um, wall of cymbidiums that are now blooming. And this is one of my favorites. This is one of maybe 10 that are there. Wow. This is another one that's got 10 of them. And they're just... This one's on a different wall because this one needs, these need more shade. So the other King ones Kianum. have more sun. Right. Dendrobium. So the, Dendrobium kingianum, the Australian yeah. dendrobium. Yeah. And then this. This one's in my kitchen. And uh, what's it? Uh, forgot the name of it now. It's a mil, uh, Miltoniopsis, I think. I, and I think it's just growing. It's just blooming. Let me see if I can get the names where they show up better. Hold on a second. I wrote them it's sitting, next, it's sitting Mil next to my air fryer, so <laughs> it gets a lot of humidity. It's Miltonidium <laughs> Pacific Waters Paul's Pride. That's wow. MTDM. I had to look that one up. So, all right. And then one more is a Zygopedalum. Mm, that one I love. I've got two or three of these. All right. Well, thank you for sharing. Yeah. Okay. Same next color. up is Dave Hermeyer and Sam Wattman. Oh, Beautiful. Germanium. Wow. That's a nice one. Oh, uh, yeah. Ted Bacon, Germanium. And Bacon. And Dendrobium Lodigesii. Yeah, right. Where, well, um, what, um, what way are your plants facing on these walls where the plants are blooming? Um, it, well, these are mounted, and I just yeah. moved them out of the greenhouse for a, a better. Oh, I see. They're in the greenhouse. Background. Okay. 
Okay. You know, it's not in the greenhouse. I just moved them so that the background looked better. This is oh, nice. um, Lily Catlia Black Forest Dark Splendor. It's gorgeous. And a Leptodes bicolor. And I think there's another, well, let's see here. Sarcochylum, Sarcochylum Colnura Rosetta, lovely by Bunyip Super Free. <laughs> Probably slaughtering the names. <laughs> and another Sarcochylus, Fitzgerald DI. Now these grow sort of like some videos or no? Um, yeah, I just grow them in my, uh, my greenhouse. It gets pretty cold and they seem to do okay. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Your plants are always gorgeous. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Any questions before we move on? Heidi? I have a question. Yes. I grow mine outside right now and it's blooming really nicely. Um, do you recommend it staying out there or do I need to move it in a certain part of the year? I live in the Mission neighborhood. It's nice and sunny. You grow what outside? You, the Sarko Chilas. Oh, the Sarko um, Yeah. I, I haven't been growing them that long, um, so I, I don't really know that much about them. But, uh, they seem to do okay um, in my greenhouse. Okay. Deborah, this is Tanya. I grow mine outside in San Jose and we get down to, you know, this year didn't get very cold, but we have 30s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this year is yeah. mostly 40s and above and I, mine hadn't opened yet, They, but I have lots of bud. I can't wait to show them hopefully next month. Mine is outside. It's a little baby one, but it gets morning sun, so I just. just I have, are, are I have two cymbidium as well. I have two cymbidiums that are blooming um, on this front porch in San Bruno at a friend's house, and they're under a big, huge juniper bush, or, or, I don't know, it's this massive juniper thing. Um, I had one at my house and cut it down but it's here so they're constantly in the shade and this is the first time they just threw out these and I'm sorry I have the pictures on my phone I would have sent them to you um, but I probably have like 15 or or 15 or more spikes on 15 or more flowers on each spike and the purple ones um, have three spikes and the white ones like the first ones you showed um, has one very long, long spike. Um, but this is the first time that I got the cymbidiums uh, to bloom this well over here. And it was when I moved them to be under this bush. And or it's almost like a tree, it's huge. It covers the whole front of the house. But at my house in San Francisco, I grew them on my front porch where I would get morning sun. And my Mazda Valley has never stopped blooming and the cymbidium started to bloom there as well, but all out, it's a covered porch, but it's all outside. Um, and I'm in the Excelsior in the city. And here oh, okay. in San Bruno, there's, she has fog up here all the time. It's up above the jail and it's in an area that, that um, gets a lot of fog and those cymbidiums are just, I've never seen them so happy, but they're Thanks, outside. Thanks, Claire. Um, Bill, were you about to say something? I saw you. Oh no, I was just testing to see because I didn't lo upload any pictures. I was just testing to see if I could show them with my cell phone. <laughs> oh, okay. Let so me uh, let me run the rest of the ones I have on mine, and then we'll just wrote, we'll go around. Okay. So Heidi, Heidi, are you on the phone? Let's see. Well, let's see. So Heidi sent me a few pictures. I don't know, you might be on mute. What's that? Heidi? Uh, okay. Well, I don't hear her. So I Heidi sent me a list. So she wanted to point out, so the reason she sent this for show and tell is at um, POE in February at the division table for Cymbidiums, 
uh, she had bulbs that were pseudo bulbs that were put into a plastic bag and mm -hmm. they, they started um, uh, sprouting. sprouting. But she just wanted to make a plug to thank people for doing the division table and to let people know that they actually do, they are alive. Um, this was a question she had. This was last month, she showed this one when it was pretty. And she wanted to point out that there's this green bud that just sprouted up and hasn't <laughs> opened yet, like where what? everything else is spent. And she hadn't seen that before. And she wanted to ask people if they see this ever. I can't say I've ever seen a doodle, a new bud come up that new when everything's that far along. Okay. It really wants to bloom, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Heidi, are you still on? I don't see her. Okay, well, I'll send her a note back. We'll just keep going. She only sent a few. And then it was starting to re-spike, so I guess it was going oh, cool. through a growth phase. <laughs> wow. Well, okay. some, will bloom, some will bloom twice a year. Also, if there was a sudden change in temperature. Last year, my um, canaliculatum, or year before last, I brought it to the San Francisco show. And it convinced it it was winter. So when I put it back in the greenhouse, it thought it was spring, and it put on eight more spikes. <laughs> so, Hey, Heidi. I am you, unmuted. I unmuted you there. Can you talk? Yeah, I am. I am unmuted. And I thank you. This is Heidi. I thank you so much for saying everything I was going to say. Well, you sent <laughs> emails. I'm sorry. I couldn't figure out what yeah. to do. I, yeah, I couldn't figure out why you couldn't hear me. But there we are. And I can't figure out why I can't get on the, the video. But I keep trying. Okay, well, so, I whatever. Just pictures ahead of time, so <laughs> yep. we're good. All right. Um, good. Well, oh, I'm wondering if everybody's muted because of me. Do I need to un unmute people? Can you hear me? Yeah. I hear Hello. You. Okay, I'm so we're yeah. Not muted. Um, All right. Yeah. Hello. Muting myself. Okay. I'm okay. <laughs> All right, we're moving on to Jan and Fred. So um, Jan, they sent us a, a, a nice group of photos. So this was some sort of cat intermedia hybrid, right? We think so. I, I've lost the tag and I thought it was an intermedia hybrid, but I'm not sure. But I have the colors in it, so I sent it along. This is a uh, cymbidium that's blooming in front of my front door. And I don't think it's a species, but I'm not sure what it is. Anybody got any ideas? Is it pyloric? No. No. It's not pyloric. It just looks a little different. <laughs> it's kind of green, yellow. And you know, at first, when it started coming out, I thought it was mad at them. And then now it's growing up instead of, you know, hanging down. So, anyway, I don't know what it is, but it's got a lot of flowers. <laughs> This is gorgeous. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I'm gonna look this one up. And then Philea Magic Wand. So it's a Calianthe by Guaraciclia. Okay. It's, it's a multi generic, I think. I looked it up because I, I couldn't remember where I got it and I thought it was just spectacular, but uh, I, I thought maybe it was, the tag was misspelled and I had not heard of that uh, particular um, cross. Elanthinea. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, very interesting, beautiful. I have the one of the parents, I think, the trick or treat. <laughs> now this, that one grows in the lath house. I have two greenhouses and a lath house that just has a Lexan covering over it with no heat and just a couple of fans in it. So most of these others are in the greenhouse. This is, um, the next one is in Cyclia bractescence. And I think I sent you a bunch of photos of that. I'm so excited about it blooming finally. I um, collected this in Belize years ago when you could bring plants out and they lasted about a year and promptly died. And I've yearned for one for a long time and I saw Andy had it at our last show down here in Orange County. So I bought it and it's given me a nice show even though they're not showy flowers, they're tiny. But, uh, oh yeah, there's the telltale Andy. Yeah, Andy stag on the mount. Yeah, <laughs> orchids on a stick. Oh, look now, at this. this. This is 
I forget what it's called, Encyclia parviflora, but it looks like an allotta. I, I mean, I've grown allotta for a while, but it has bigger flowers, but the coloration and the shapes are very similar. Mm -hmm. And it's a tiny flower. It's about two inches high by an inch and a half wide. Gorgeous. Does it smell like a lot of, it's like root beer, right? No, it doesn't have much fragrance, but I brought it in the house as soon as it began to open. So sometimes that affects, you know, the fragrance that I get from them. This is, um, forget what the genus is. But epicat, it, I think. Yeah, it's an epicat. Renee Marcus flamethrower. And this came, I've had one of those before and never bloomed. In fact, I still have it. And then I bought this one at Cal Orchid the last time I was there and it's bloomed two years in a row now. Really unusual looking. And this is ep, 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 epi, an epi lacustra. And it's called fireworks. It, the, one I, the person I got it from had hers and it was it had a lot of purple in it mine turned out to be all green flowers didn't last a real long time but it's an interesting plant it grows tall needs to be fairly moist Ooh. and this this is um Chimella. Emilia sagittata this i took that's it out nice hmm? nice and i took it out in the sunshine to photograph it grows in my lower greenhouse and of course it's African, but um, I don't grow it up high in the greenhouse. It sits on the cement floor, so. Wow, pretty. Thank you. And this is a cat that bloomed in the greenhouse upstairs and it doesn't have a tag. I have no idea what it is, but <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> and this is Leptotes bicolor. And this is Lycastia aromatica, just open. They're not even fully open yet, but they hang on a, a, a store fixture rack that's in the bottom of my, that's in the back of my greenhouse. And that is nice. the old coconut, <laughs> bright red, bright red coloration. I have another one that's kind of yellow. This is, um, yeah, this is Theo. Uh, Golden George, and I acquired that like in February from when we had our show down here. Thought it was unusual. Yeah. Beautiful. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so here are some I took, um, and I know Christian had a beautiful one of these too because I saw he posted it around the same time mine opened a week or so ago. Um, this is Restrepia condorensis. Uh, that's hard to see. That was a well, Pluralis. Oh, these were movies. Wait a minute, what happened here? Let's see. Let me see yeah. if the movies will play. So you can get a better view of it. Let's see. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why they were kind of blurry. <laughs> there you go. All right, and this, let's see, is this a movie? This is a movie too. So it goes in so you can see the little, I move it around so you can kind of see the little, um, what are they called, semaphores or whatever, the little arms that have the little um, bulbs on the end that give off the pheromones to it. Mm. <laughs> so. I think it's funny that yours are straight. Mine have a noticeable little crooked, like a, I don't know, almost like a lightning bulb shape to them. Always. The side arms? Yes. Oh. How big is that flower? It's about an inch and a half, two inches. A good size That's for a restriction. nice big one. Yeah, it keeps blooming actually. I usually only get one or two at a time. You can see there's other buds on it. Mm -hmm. I grow it in a fog house. So this area is uh, like um, Dracula's and Pleurothalids are all in this foggy area that I have under the deck. Um, oh, and then in the greenhouse, this isn't an orchid, but I, I love the color of this. This is Tillandsia Albertina. T Albertiana. 
and I brought the orange one next to it. Uh, they, they bloom on, for months at a time. It is actually a Racinii undulifolia. It's another kind of Tillandsia like bromeliad. <laughs> is it fragrant? Um, I've never noticed, um, but they're pretty. <laughs> And then uh, Dave had a nicer load of GZI. I have two that are blooming now at, and the, the, over here. And then next to it is uh, Aggregatum, the big yellow one. And I have multiple stalks now opening the kind of lemony yellow or kind of more yolky, I guess. Um, oh, oh, this wow. is a video. So this is a nice. new Dracula that just opened for me. It has I'm three buds teeth. on it. Um, so this just opened a couple days ago, and I haven't bloomed that before. So that's Dracula Sitacina. <laughs> so these look like the real monkey orchid, people call it to me. And mm -hmm. you see the face, if you will. All right. Um, what else? And you keep the moss pretty loose in those baskets for the Dracula, right? Yes. Um, yeah. I have different ones. So to be, to be completely honest, these I got at Pluralithalid Alliance meetings. And they get uh, John Leathers and, and uh, Joe, Par they, 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 Joe Parker, they um, have different media. So whatever it came in, I leave it the way they had it. <laughs> one does it in moss and one does it in kind of a bark. Okay. So it's whatever they're acclimated to, unless I have to repot them. But, and then this is a Pleurothallis I've had for a while. And it, this is the first time it started blooming. And now I have like lots of these buds. This was a nice pretty flower. It's about uh, maybe a half inch to a quarter, uh, three quarters of an inch. Um, Plurithalis lineana. And now we move on to Judy. Judy Carney. Um, Judy, are you on? Let's see her. Log in. Let me just see. Well, I'll run through Judy's because I don't see her online. But um, this is. Um, Oh, it doesn't have that. I guess it's Catlia Calman's nobility. I didn't get the, the genus in there. Also, she, I don't know why she put the Lysol wipe. <laughs> <all. laughs> she <wants laughs> but her pictures. She's got Lysol wipes. Yeah, it shows how clean they are. So this is one that um, wow. Dendrobium lingu uh, linguiformia, and you'll see the leaves are uh -huh. thick and have the sort of striations, the ridges in them. I think that's why it looks like tongues. They're called lingua formi, right? Lingua. Great blooming on that. Mine aren't even blooming yet. Well, it is Judy, so. <laughs> yes, it is. And then this is her Sarcochylus colnura um, hybrid, which didn't know what the, didn't have what the cross was, but. Um, and <laughs> nice call again. Sarcochyla, <laughs> Sweetheart Edith by uh, Enith, Enid Hercules. And now we're on to Kay. And I heard Kay, so I know she's here. <laughs> I'm here. That's my adorable Angracum ar arachnides. Um, with, the, with all the tails, it's about five inches long, but it's a really wow. small plant. Wow. And that's another angracum. This is really tiny. That the tail on that one is about an inch long. Both of those are from Madagascar. This is Satipes. And that's a. And there's a picture of the whole plant, which is quite small. And this is the weirdest plant I've got today, which is Epidendrum lacertinum. Um, took a picture so you can see the spidery flowers and uh, the how rangy the plant is. It's really not pretty. Can you hear my cat? He's decided, he's decided to join in. Um, what's, he, what's he saying? I can't understand. Yeah, I know. It's a little hard. I, so. 
Yeah, I think I want attention too. is usually part of it. What an interesting way the pseudobulbs grow on that. Yeah, it's a very weird plant. It's got, at the top there, you can see it's got a new new start going off. So I'm, mm -hmm. They almost well, look like ginger hands, you know, like. Yeah, they're very, it's really look strange looking plant. So do you spray them or what? Uh, that grows out in the, in the intermediate greenhouse, so it's pretty humid oh. out there. Peaches, shut up. Okay. This is Miltonia phimatochyla. Yeah, phimatochyla. That I got from uh, Jason Douglas. It grows outside here in San Francisco. Come here. Oh, he's very vocal. Yes, he's a, he's a vocal cat. Um, and uh, we've become very close <laughs> these days. This is a uh, little uh, Ornithocephalus ecuadorensis. Um, the next one I think is a picture so you can maybe see the flowers. They're very tiny. I think Mary had one at at uh, POE that was fabulous. Really full mm. of flowers. I like the, the uh, fan-shaped growth on these. Let's see if I can. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can when I do that, do you guys there. see it scaling in and out, zooming in and yes. out? Yes. Yeah, okay. it's good. All right. Oh, wow. There's my frag, which finally bloomed, Cardanum. That I have in the um, greenhouse window, west greenhouse window. Renanthera. And my Renanthera uh, vietnamensis. I've been trying to grow Renantheras forever, and I finally got one that's blooming. I'm very pleased with that. You can see it has it's just started to open. It has a lot more buds to come. It's a cool grower. I got it from Peter Lin. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's Brinkos Dolly Red Nugget. Also a cool grower. All right. So that might be, I think those are all, I think those are all the ones people sent me ahead of time. So Bill or is who, who else? Uh, Bill wanted to talk, I think, right? Yeah, I can show you something. I, I don't know how well this is going to work. I didn't, I haven't, I took these pictures this week and have not um, unloaded them off of my phone yet. Let's see if we can make it visible. Oh, I see it. Those it's are my, blurry. those are the Starkachylus in the greenhouse. I, I pulled up the picture because we were talking about growing them with your cymbidiums. And these are surrounded by cymbidiums. But I did learn one thing. They like a lot more airflow than cymbidiums do. So when I put them in surrounded by lots of really tall cymbidiums, they all got moldy and they all got fungus. Mm. And the one FCC I've ever gotten, I have one tiny little speck of it left. <laughs> oh. Fungus got the rest of it. And then uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Uh, I was taking lots of pictures from the greenhouse, but didn't upload them to the, the laptop yet. And then with cymbidiums, two of my favorites in the same picture, which may not come out too well at all. Oh, well, never mind. Uh, there's a matadum in the background. It's up on a, up on a bucket. And then in the foreground, the loianum. And this, this matadum, you can't, it's a matadum hybrid, but it's got like 14 spikes on it in the three gallon pot. So uh, nice. I'm quite happy with it. <laughs> you know, you, you put on a three foot spike, yeah, they don't have to have big flowers if it's a three foot long spike. So let's see, oh, and then this one, I get, this is kind of cheating because I only just got this very recently, but it's so cool. Astronaut Leopard's Feathered Flame. I like the feathered and pleuric. Wow. Oh, nice. That's very nice dark yellow with really good uh, red markings on it. So I have hopes for that to get bigger. Audrey's already saying, oh, you should divide that. It's like, child, it's got two gross, to two bulbs and a growth. <laughs> oh, and the, the final one. This is all the Jose Pinhos that I was going to sell at all the other shows this year. 
and they're all blooming up a storm right now. But I got no place to sell them. So I've got like dozens of these things. It's just going to have to get bigger and bloom next year. Because I divided one plant and ended up with like 50 of these things. Wow. So they're a nice little purple flower, but you know, uh, after uh, when we got to Santa Barbara and everything got canceled, well, I have a lot of leftovers. <laughs> we could do we could do a dry a curbside drive up uh, sale. That is allowed. <laughs> there you go. go. Up up. You, you come by, we'll throw flowers in your windows as you go by. <laughs> <laughs> take them, take them away, take them away. Maybe we could do a parking lot. Faye had that idea before. We could just get a parking lot and do it in a parking lot. There you go. Well, everybody can have their plants in their cars and we'll be at social distance. We'll all step one car to the left as we all look at everybody else's plants. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Well, that would be fun. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Bill. Anyone else have pictures they want to share or anything else they want to talk about before we go to the raffle? I have a few. Okie doke. Should I just, let me see, let me see. Oh, ah, there we go. Okay, there's my Restrepia condorensis. And I wanted to buy this because this is from a talk I think Dan Newman gave, was it last year sometime? And he brought one of those plants and it was in flower uh, to the opportunity table and that's the one Jeff got. So I got this one from Equahenera. Let me see. There we go. It's a little How did closer. you know? That is the one I got. I got him. I know, because I wanted it. You got oh. it. <laughs> so see my little arms here. Oh, Jeff, yeah. Those are they cute. They have this little crookedy thing, and they don't straighten out. They stay like this. Oh. Hmm. Genetic uh, problem. <laughs> OK, this is I bought it as a um, Platistole umbellata, but it is not. It is actually Ortiziana is what it's called. I don't know if you can see it, that it has like a really almost triangular. Yeah, that's a pen next to it. Yeah. <laughs> There's the that's plant and the, picture. the different great. lighting. And there you can see it's actually nice and purple. They're really cute. Yeah, that's... And this thing blooms year round. Did you do that with your phone? Yes. Oh, that's great. I have a macro lens that you clip on. So that's that uh. little red, that red rim you see in the bottom, that's a macro lens. Mm. Mm. Okay, then this is Mastavalia pallida. I got it from Dan Newman at POE. It came with two buds which wilted. And now this is a new bud that opened for me like a really flat flower it's a big flower i mean that mount is maybe three inches tall the whole thing and this plant is longer than the whole mount top to bottom well no almost well this is vandenopsis pul pulcherimin there's a primate this is an intergeneric hybrid of vanda miniatum and uh, by phalaenopsis pulcherima hmm. This guy. The funny thing is I posted this on Facebook the other day and Jason Douglas commented, where did you get this plant? I don't know what happened to ours. Well, evidently his plant made it to the member table and I want it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so <laughs> oh. <laughs> so Ron, are you still so. here? <laughs> no. Yeah. We, I think we, we, we got it from uh, Matt at Tinchin and I think we for some reason we we got rid of it, and I don't know. And we thought we, I don't, we, we didn't know if we sold it or if it died or what. But apparently, <laughs> Christian might have ended up with it. <laughs> well, maybe he'll divide it. Maybe. Awesome. Well, this is a Stuartiana, Phalaenopsis Stuartiana. Very um, nice one. That I. That's beautiful. I love that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I just got that at Poe. The punctatissima, which you can tell by all these little dots. This is Phalaenopsis loose, cute angel, which I got as a gift from one of my clients, totally neglect, neglected little supermarket thing. And then this is the first spike, which wilted pretty quickly, and now it has two more spikes on the way. Where do you grow it? Just windowsill, or do you have it in a humid? 
So I, I right now, I didn't take a video yet, maybe next meeting or the meeting after. I just built a greenhouse in the garden. And mm. I also have a grow space indoors where my phalaenopsis are. Great. All, all under lights. And yeah, so this is Sogo grape, phalaenopsis Sogo grape fireball which is blooming like crazy. It's really hard to get a good picture with these saturated red glossy flowers. I have a few of those. This is one of my favorites. This is Phalaenopsis sanchia appendo. It's a primary hybrid of, um, again, uh, Phalaenopsis pulcherima by uh, appendiculata. And there you can see how tiny the flowers are. Oh, one cent. Okay. okay. Is that from Norman? No, that's not from Norman. That's from POE. Okay. I have something similar that I got from Norman. This is Oberonia japonica. It's like a teeny tiny miniature thing. It looks pretty big, but the whole plant is the size of a quarter. <laughs> it's like, it's really hard. I tried to zoom in on the flowers, but they're just too small. I just can't get them to photograph, yeah. This is one of my japonicas in bloom right now. It's very pale. Mm -hmm. And somehow the rest of the spike busted, I don't know, but I, have, but I treated everything with uh, some fungicide, that's probably why. This was a formerly known, formerly no ID, and then someone helped me identify it, and it's a new hybrid from Taiwan. This is Phalaenopsis. Yen, Yenshin Passat. That's what it's called. Super pretty. The flowers are really have this nice chartreuse green, yellowish tone to it. I'm not usually a fan of yellow, but this is so pretty. Nice. Yep, that's about it. Thank you. Those are all incredible. Thank you. Yeah, nice bit. Yes, yes, wonderful. Thank you. Chris, we should get you to uh, give a seminar on the photography as well, man. Those are great. It's yeah. all cell phone. Cell phone, cell phone. And, a, and a piece yeah, of cloth. Oh, okay. Is it an 11? Fantastic. You got an Apple 11? I got the new one, yeah. I got the 11. Yeah. And then I don't adjust the colors at all. I have this little clip on ring light. I don't know if you've seen me running around like a crazy person at POE with it. It's a nice, it's a round little clip on thing and it creates a very net, net neutral bright light. And when I take the pictures, all I do is I set the, um, what is it called? The black point to the maximum. So the background gets darker and that just brings out the color more. I don't adjust any other colors. They're great. Where did you that's get it. That Who makes the accessory? lights? I got it on Amazon. It was like $7 or something. Oh, really? Yes. What you, what you can do with a thousand dollar phone. <laughs> it's like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a ring, ring flash or, or, or a lens? It's, light. It's, a, it's a light. It's a clip on light. That you clip on on your over your phone. Hold on, if you if you want to talk amongst yourself, I can get it real quick. I'll show you. Hold on. All right. Hey Jeff, so I have one photo that I can show, and I actually have a question for the group around it. Right. Okay. So let me see if it will. And I, if for those that don't know Jeff, uh, oh. he was just elected president. So yes. And the, <laughs> the other Jeff Harris, which I needed to make very clear that it was the correct Jeff Harris that was elected president. <laughs> um, so Jeff, if I want to share my screen here, will it, do you have to give me permission? I shouldn't. No. All should right. Not. Uh, oh, okay, I'm back. All right. Sorry. But yeah, so what this is, is it's a little clip-on, little ring light. Oh. It has a button. And what you do is you take your cell phone and you clip it on top of the camera like this. And then you can adjust the lighting, it goes lighter. Wow. And that's all I use. Huh. And then oh, for the... And what's yeah. the lens that, the macro lens that you have? That is this, you can also buy these for cell phones. They're like little macro lenses and you clip them on top of your camera and then you can take a picture with that. How much is that? <laughs> Oops. This is all. It's it, this is the same price wise. It's just a. It's just a few dollars. It's not really expensive. <laughs> That's great. And who makes the light? Do you know the name of the person that make the company that makes the light? Just type if you just go to Google and type in flash um, cell phone ring light. 
this is what comes up. Okay. Cell phone ring light. Okay. Cell phone ring light. Right now. And then these will come up. It's battery operated. And I also have a big, um, I also have a big professional photography ring light that I use in the salon when I take pictures of hair I do. And I tried that, but you have to take the picture. It's, it's about two, two and a half feet wide, the diameter. So you have to take the picture through the light. And that is just a hassle because as soon as you move your hand a little too much forward with the camera, then you create shadows on the plant. So I always had a problem with this. And then I bought this cheap thing. I tried it out and I been successful. And I shot, do you see all the pictures in the newsletter that I shoot are all shot with this. Wow. Oh, it's fantastic. Nice. Good tip. Okay, Jeff, you're up. We see so your can you can you see the screen? Yes. 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 Okay, perfect. So this is actually the last Lele Anceps, and I probably have, I don't know, probably almost 20 different clones of Lele Anceps. And so this one's super duper late for me. And and having lived in San Diego, almost all of them would bloom between, you know, say January and at the latest, like the Guatemalan forms would bloom in March. And up here, almost all of them didn't really start getting going until, you know, the end of February, kind of middle of March, all the way through April here. This one's still going into May. And I'm just wondering if that's actually other people's experience of growing anceps here, or if this is just really unusual to bloom this late. Um, you know, I'm just trying to think of like, how, do you, how does one uh, grow outdoors here? And is this a, just the, a different, a, a non-trivial difference between uh, how you go about growing these things. Uh, we grow ours outside, and we actually we have one that's still in spike. It hasn't even bloomed yet for the year, but most of the other ones have bloomed already. Okay, because yeah, I've never seen an anceps bloom. Like, I mean, this one was like one of those things where I was like, well, that's super weird, <laughs> seeing it, you know, uh, come up and just start. You know, this opened maybe four or five days ago. Yeah. So um, that was the major thing is just trying to get a sense of uh, if if the season shifted like four or six weeks, because um, if you start thinking of things that you want to bring to shows and things like that, you know, I know, um, actually, Bill, you showed all those fantastic, uh, you know, uh, Australian dendrobiums, it seems like they, they bloom a little bit later up here as well. All mine bloom in April. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah cause I have some... I have cymbidiums that are just starting to open their flowers. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of them that are running really late this year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, it was just a curiosity because that's certainly like, if you think of some of the most spectacular, you know, Australian dendrobiums as an example, some of those ancepts, um, you know, the Santa Barbara orchid show was sort of scheduled in some ways around that, that a lot of those things kind of like late February were like in high season down there. Um, and and I was sort of surprised that this was so much later up here. What's that wooden structure behind you? Uh, oh, for me, this is actually, so I've been, I'm actually on the phone all the time for work and I got sick of looking at my office. So this is a beautiful picture of, this is a famous place just outside. Those are the Tetons in the background. This is at yes. sunset there. And I that's a, that this little, um, uh, village of like it's called the I think it's called the Mormon village that's um, just outside of Jackson there and so it basically looks up at the Tetons it's incredibly beautiful and uh, right when basically people take sunrise and sunset pictures there all the time it's a it's a it's a very well-known spot so I, I kept thinking like we can't travel so I'll just at least imagine myself at somewhere cool that I've been in life <laughs> mm, nice I like it all right. Anyway, that's all I had. Thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, well, Jason wanted to show. Thank you for showing. Uh, you can see it on the screen or not, but oh, maybe not. I don't know that's coming in. But our, that's yeah. the one we have outside, and it's still a bit tightly in spike. It's not even uh, buzzer. Oh, wow, yeah. That's uh, Ancepts Rebecca Northern. Mm -hmm. I got it from um, uh, Tom. Uh, I'm drawing a blank on his name. <laughs> Up, he grows, you know, with Susan and Lynn. Uh, Tom Pickford. Tom Pickford. Yeah, it's uh, Lynn and Seth Riddick, when they had their open house last April. Um, he gave me a division of it, mm. and so uh, it was in bloom at that time. So it blooms late, and this year we have it outside. It still has a bloom. Yep. 
Yeah, certainly like the like the ones that are from the sort of southern distribution, like down into Guatemala and stuff like that are known to be kind of like the latest ones, but this was definitely beyond what I would have expected. But I guess you adjust your expect expectations when you get the data in, so. All right. Anyone else have stuff they want to share before show and tell? Thank you. This is Tanya real quick. Do I have time? Yeah. All right. Let me share screen again. I meant before raffle, not before show and tell. Do <laughs> um, you see my screen? No. 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 Oh, how come it didn't come up? Um, all right. Here's screen two. Share. Yep, that worked. This is a tiny oncidium. It's a mule ear type, but it's not very big. This is in the four inch pot, and I lost the tag. This is a species. Still didn't work. Uh, no, no. Tanya, we, Tanya, we still got the beach picture. Yeah. He's running on the beach. Oh, really? I don't yeah. have any beach. Looks like it's a cover. It must be your screensaver. So. I don't have screensaver. Well, it's, it's what showed before. <laughs> it's this beautiful beach picture. Yes, who was the last one to share? Um, They're probably still sharing. Let me stop share and try one more time. Okay. If not, then we'll let go. How oh, about there that? It is. There you go. That's there cute. Is. Perfect. That's nice. it looks yes. the same Perfect. As so this is a tiny oncidium ear type. It's in a four inch pot. The flowers bow closer to an inch and it's right by the rhizome. So just uh, kept it dry. It's a species that I got from Hilo, Hawaii, but I lost the tag somewhere. Uh. We'll find it. Um, how do I get to next picture? Oh, no, I can't move. Oh, there we go. This is a plurotalid, and I'm bad on taking names. So it's a species I got from Andy's orchids outside. Um, it's quite pretty. It's small. It's about half inch flower. And here's the whole plan. Is it Octavioi? Octavioi? Something like that? I don't know. I don't grow many cool things. So this probably, I only have maybe two per thousand. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll take the name next time. This is a um, Symbidium uh, Canalum hybrid. It's called April Fool. Got from um, the guy who moved to um, Utah, Doug, Doug Wallace, a um, couple years ago. And it doesn't bloom every year. It's quite a big plant now. It's very dense in the two gallon, three gallon pot, but it got about four spikes. This uh, you saw last time, it's a um, Schoenhaven. Um, Castor, yeah. Max, maxillaria, yeah. Like Castor. Like um, this is a uh, cymbidium that, I don't grow many cymbidium, but this one blooms every year around this time. Um, this is a close-up flower. This is a cymbidium daddy's girl, so it's a, also I uh, believe it's a primary hybrid. It's a close-up, it's pretty fragrant. Wow. Hmm. And this one, I do not have the name but very similar. Here, this is one of my early orchids, um, Epi Parkinsonianum. And it's, um, I have a couple of them, they're all in bloom. This one is the one that I got from cow orchid. It's a little bit smaller flowers, also in bloom. This one is a Habanaria medusae and I kept it dry all winter and it started to sprout, so I got so excited. Um, Renantara, this is a Imshutiana hybrid. Again, don't have the name. I started all the Renantara starting to bloom. This uh, Vanda non, non Taran by um, Pachara, this one has not stopped blooming since February. Wow. So, two wow. spikes coming. Uh, each one lasts about maybe four weeks and then new one comes. So this is probably the sixth spike um, since February. How much sun does it get? It got br pretty bright in the greenhouse. It's near the front, so that's facing west. 
um, but it's against the wall. So it, uh, all, my, all my vendors are grown bright, but this one is the one that bloomed the most. Mm. Also pretty big flower. This is a, um, what is it? Um, the primary, what's the name? I just draw a blank. Um, Cerulea by, gosh, it's a popular one. And here's my Nail Phoenicia hybrid um, by color. This is a uh, hybrid of Nail Phoenicia by, um, what is that, Vendacious, very fragrant. And this blooms a couple times a year too. There are lots of spikes. Androbium, this one is uh, probably, this is not this color. by something. One of the species, yeah. And here's another Vanda that blooms a lot. This one is Burnus um, something. It also has Cerulea in the background. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, uh, that's it. So thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for everything you Thank did. you for sharing. Yes. Welcome. I know we're running late, but I just no, that's why we're here. Like <laughs> All right. So, raffle time. Joe, Joe has a bowl here. <laughs> Actually, let me change the background. Let's see. You'll be able to see the room. <laughs> you just reach through your, your, yeah, uh, your <laughs> orchid wall there. A second. Yeah. There. Can you see Joe? Yeah. yeah. Hi, Joe. Oh, yes. Hi, Joe. All right, so he's going to draw the names. He'll be Ellen. I'll be right. Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Right. So what do we it's get, Jeff? $20 gift certificate for um, Tiny Jungle Let's Got Plants. Uh, Great. Valerie, is Valerie uh, Mountain, was she online? Are you here? I'm here. Valerie. Huh? I'm here. All right, you're the first winner. Too. Congratulations, right. Valerie. <laughs> All right, number two, Susan Anderson. Oh, yeah. Hey, um, donate that back because we won last time. I can't afford to have her win again. She spends too much money. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is Susan Anderson. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> Just donate it back. Okay. Um, let's see here. Inga, are you still on? Inga. Let's see. Let me see if I can see everyone. Oh, hello, Hi. Oh, nice tortoise shell, Chris. <laughs> oh, hold on a second. She's a little attached. Yes, I know what you mean. Mine is. Uh... <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm trying to get this set up so I can see who's on still. Hey Joe, that's a shirt. What? That's a great shirt, Joe. My it's... best friend made it for me. No, no, uh, there you go. It's spring. Wow. Sweet. What's your kitty's name, Chris? That's Amy. Amy. We had to nurse her back to health. She came to us. She's a little disabled, but she's she's Aww. fine. She doesn't have balance, and she's a little wobbly. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Gia, Gia Lee, are you on? I think you're on mute. I'm on. Hello, hello. You're the one of the hello. winners. Thank you. Yeah. Woo Hey, okay, let's see. All right. Uh, Eric. Sam. Yeah. You won. Let's see. Let's see. Tom, are you on? Tom who? Vavrina. I saw him on earlier. Really? Tom, are you still on? He may have left. Let's see. All right. Um, 
Larry, I think you're on mute. Can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, hi. Hey, 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 you're a winner. You're gonna win, a, a, I just make sure, I think I've got your email. I'll follow up with each of the winners afterwards by email, so. That's fantastic, thank you. All right. Big winners. Winner, <laughs> winner, chicken dinner. Uh, can't read. Oh, Paul. Paul Bourbon, are you on? You're a winner. I don't see him. I see Paul. We're here. here. Thank you. There he is. Oh, nice. Edith, yep. wonder Edith. <laughs> oh, no, you're kidding. All right, Kay. Thank you. Okay. And wait, let me make sure I didn't do 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, Dave Hermeyer. Thank you. All right. Um, oh, you're done. I think we're done. Let me just double check. I don't want to give out more than I got. One, two, three, four. <laughs> what would be bad? All right, and then uh, and Tanya and John for um, doing presentations. You guys get prescriptions. So. Awesome, thank you. All right. Yay. So Good thank day. you everyone. Um, I'm recording the, I, I forgot to start recording at the very beginning. So we missed recording John's light talk, but I asked him to do it separately for our YouTube channel as a separate talk, I did kept get Tanya's onward. So um, just forgot to do it. <laughs> so thanks for your cooperation. Uh, send me any feedback on how we could do this better. Um, next month, uh, we're going to have hopefully a speaker. Uh, I mentioned at the beginning, uh, Jason Fisher from Minnesota talking about orchid log growing. All right. Okay. Is he going to send plants for the round? Thanks for putting this together. Sure, sure. Yeah, uh, he's still you. figuring out what he's going to do for the raffle. We're, we're figuring it out. <laughs> okay. Okay. Bye, right. okay. Bye everyone. Bye, Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks. Good night. Beautiful plants, Bye. everyone.